Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna go over this launch tool right here for diagnostics for Toyota vehicles. This is a very cheap and affordable scan tool that does everything that you need to do as far as diagnostics goes. And it also has factory text stream type menus and options which is only accessible through the computer using the tech stream software at the toyota dealer so we'll go ahead and go over all the features of this and then go over it for the toyota avalon so stay tuned So I've had a couple of videos on this tool on my Lexus vehicles, both my Lexus vehicles, as well as my Sienna video. We went over all the different menus and options on those vehicles. So on today's video, we'll go over the Toyota Avalon, which is more like a Camry anyways. So we'll go see what features we can do on that one and see what diagnostics we have as far as this launch tool goes. But as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the features in here are found in TechStream, which is an OEM Toyota software that you can only use at the dealership or if you have a subscription to it. In addition, I'm launching this video during Amazon Prime Week here in July of 2024. So check out the links down in the description for this same unit and if there's a valid code during that week so you could use to get a discount off this thing if you want one yourself. So as you see here in the box, uh, it basically just comes with the tool. The tool has an onboard attached OBD2 plug with a cover on it and some silica packs. Pretty much that's all it comes with. Once you turn it on, you You'll probably have the option to upgrade to the latest version of all the software that's preloaded onto here. In addition, you want to connect to your Wi-Fi network in your house or where you're at. That way you can do those updates. And the reason why you want the connectivity is you actually download a lot of the logs, email them to yourself so you can actually work on it on a computer or on another device so you could have record of everything once you scan the car. So since I have it here not plugged up to the car, you can plug up a USB-C cable to it with power and it'll turn on. Generally when you're in the car, the OBD2 port right here with the 12 volts coming out of the car will keep it powered. But if you have to mess with it or set it up on your desk or in your bench, you go ahead and just plug up a USB-C. So once you get into here, you go to the different settings right here. You can check all the things, your network, a connection, your time zone, language, all that stuff and then you could also enable screen capture that way if you run a code or you run something on your vehicle you could screen capture and email the picture and the screen to yourself so in here you go see upgrade and then on the upgrade it'll come up with all the different options and the different programs that come with this thing and it'll see what version or updates that they have so if you want to go ahead and just hit update it will go ahead and do that so right now i got a toyota lexus version they also make nissan and honda versions of this checked all three just in case i want to hit update to see if there's an update available and it'll wait for downloads and see if there's an update so usually when you get this thing out of the box you have to do this anyways just because it's a couple months old and it might have an update for you as it updates it also installs and it'll tell you if it's successful and it'll download the next version along the list here and the beauty of this thing is it comes with basically lifetime updates. So it constantly gets improved by the manufacturer and they upload different software and firmware updates all the time. I've used this thing on the, all the vehicles for the last three or four months. And every time I turn it on, there seems to be an update, which is very good because it updates newer vehicles, newer stuff that comes uh, online or gets manufactured. In addition, if you have one of the other cars like a Honda or a Nissan or something else that's supported by this thing, you can actually buy those software separately from the unit itself so you don't have to buy a whole new unit. All you have to do is just buy the programming for it and then you'll have it forever on the device. So all the different diagnostics are right here in the menu right there. You can see I have Lexus, Toyota, and Toyota China as well as the demo. In addition, under OBD, it does general OBD diagnostics for any vehicle. So if it's just an OBD code, this thing will also read it using the standard OBD2 reading. So to access the OBD port, you usually have to look under the dash. It's usually on this side, but on the Avalon, it's actually over here. There's a little white port right there. So what you do is you basically just take this thing. It only goes in one direction because of the triangle setup or the little trapezoid setup that this thing is. So once plug that in, then we get in the car, start it up, and then just let this thing boot up. So go ahead and start the car up, let that thing boot up, and then we'll log in. Once we're up and running, we want to go into here, we want to go under diagnostics, 
you want to hit Toyota for this one is a Toyota Avalon and it's this version so just hit OK and then we'll go ahead and connect to the vehicle so once we're in this menu you go ahead and just set your area we're in North America it's gonna set that area and then we can select the 16 pin right here and it's gonna take a little bit to load up and get into this menu this is a CAN bus very slow serial communication so that we don't have radar crew so we'll hit other and it has all the information it has your engine it has your mileage your model year and even the vehicle identification number so you want to go ahead and hit that okay and if we just go ahead and load everything up so once you go in here you could go ahead and just hit health report and it'll actually scan all the ECUs, all the computers on the vehicle, and it'll give you all the history of the fault codes in here. As you can see, all the systems that aren't equipped, it doesn't show up on here. So right now we have a list of all the things wrong. You can hit report, and it'll pull everything up, and you can actually send that to yourself on all these different things. A lot of this stuff is just abnormal. It's probably an old code that's still in the system that hasn't been cleared out yet. For example, engine module. So you can hit you know, it's P1604 stability, startability malfunction. So that might have been when there was a battery, low, a low battery or some other issue. So it's not a common one. So that looks like it shows up a few times. It looks like a uh, passenger airbag active mode indicator. So that's probably the plug on your radio that shows your passenger airbag. It might have been unplugged and the car was on. And same with um, TPMS. It might have had some transmitter issues at one point that didn't show up. But overall, everything on here is not anything that's got a check engine light or check light on the car. So we'll just move forward. And if we want to go ahead and just clear everything while we're in here, we can just go ahead and clear all the codes and it'll clear everything out of the system so it doesn't show up again. So we can go through here and we can just view all the different systems that we have in here. You could go ahead and look at the engine module, cruise control, the transmission, ABS, all the various systems. We can also go to the customizable settings. So that's usually what people want to go to to set different things that you have the option to set in the vehicle. Some of these might not be enabled from the factory and you can enable them like security systems and things like that. So we're in here now and here's all the different systems that you can set in here that have menus for. Some of this stuff shows up here, but it might not be anything that you can mess with. So example, wireless door lock. Most of this stuff you could do in the factory radio and infotainment system menu also, especially the door locks and the DRL stuff. So these are different settings for the auto locking and uh, the twice key. So you could go ahead and open all the doors with two keys. You wanna go do the auto lock, the shift lock. So my vehicle, I got rid of the shifter lock right here where it unlocks when I go in the park and it locks when I go in the drive. What I have is where I open the door, it unlocks and then when I go past 13 miles an hour, it locks. So under wireless control, this thing has all the different settings for your wireless control, like the beeping, the warning, the two button operation. One of the things that a lot of people don't have or don't have set up is thing, opening all doors when you put your hand on the thing. So you could set that up somewhere in here, but I'm, I don't think it's on the wireless one. I'm not sure. Same with the trunk operation. So under security, I was expecting to find the security option to turn it on and off, but all we have is the slide sunroof open warning. I think in the real tech stream, this might be an option that you can set, but on here you can't, because I know on my Sienna it was like that. So most of the power window settings are just the auto up, auto down for all the windows, which is something that you can manually set, I guess, to turn on and off. So on this particular vehicle, we can't do anything in the wiper control. It says no customizable setting. Illuminated entry, this probably turns on the different lights around the car and everything when you walk by with your key fob. So under warning, you could set the separate systems here. There's a low battery warning for your key, the seat belt buzzer. So you could turn this on and off in here so it doesn't warn you if you forget to put your seatbelt on. 
uh, I think lane change we don't have this one. Oh, this is the lane change function this is basically the set you can set the tap to turn which is set to three here i'm not sure yeah i guess you could set you could set it to four five six seven or just turn it off so the default on tap to turn is three signals and then it turns off we're going into light control now light control is another one that you could just change on your screen but here you could change the sensitivity of your auto lights coming on and on you could turn off the factory DRL. So during the day when you're in auto mode, you could turn off the DRLs on here. That's US spec only. If you're in Canada, you can't do that. And then the display settings, that's your dash when it comes to night mode and day mode. So here's another setting that uh, you can't really do, I think on the screen, but a lot of people want. You can do this with a different combination of buttons on your key fob, but Here's like this various things like waiting time between opening and closing, which sensors you want in the car to activate the key fob, all of them or just the driver's door. I think on the Avalon, all you have is a driver's door anyways. It doesn't even have a passenger one, but you can also probably turn off the one on your trunk. And then the unlock, you know, when you unlock your door with your key fob, it opens all doors or just the driver's door. So that's the majority of the settings that you can mess with in here. There's a few more I didn't really go over. Or it probably doesn't matter. So next thing you can do is go to service functions. So under this one, this is various functions that you can do. Like the tire pressure monitoring system, registering new sensors. We have the key fob programming where you can program a new key and all that. Those are all the different functions that you can do in here. So we're in this menu now. The, so the service oil button, I think, that one you just gives you the directions on how to do it. Yep, it just tells you how to do it. So that's just more directions. You can't do it through the tool. You could reset your steering angle. You could reset your sensors, your electronic throttle body, immobilizers and key programming right here. So look in here, you can see everything that we can do like the ECU communications, erasing all the keys, registering the key. So if you go through the register key, It'll go through all the different functions on how to do it and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do as far as switching everything on and off. So it'll go through like a wizard kind of to program a new key. And then same with tire pressure monitoring. It walks you through registering a new set of sensors. So you could do a main set and a second set on here. Seat calibration air conditioning initiation so that's another thing that you can do here the servo motors if you change out your servo motors you can reset those motors i'm in the ecu or ecm engine control module so you can hit that and you can go into here and mess with little things in here so you could actually read the data stream right now that's going through the system that's you could go ahead and look at the voltage you can look at the air you could do what your air conditioning is doing and all that. So these are various signals. There's 287 of them that you can watch. But if you're having any kind of issues as far as any of your sensors or your check engine light, you can go ahead and just go into here and see what it's doing as far as the voltage and everything. So I'm down here on engine speed. I can look at the cylinders. Like we look at each of the cylinders here. So each of them are right now going through. So these are the RPMs. So you can actually record this. You can print out the report. You can see all that just to diagnose anything that's going on with your engine. So we got there. So the atmospheric pressure is 14 PSI. Battery voltage is 13.2. Those are the things that we were looking at earlier. So the heater for the O2s are active right now. The circuit is. The mass airflow is grams per second, 3.6 grams per second. So that's very good information if you're just trying to diagnose things and figuring out what's wrong. So there's a ton of other features on here that I really don't have time to really go over, but you kind of see the list here. But yeah, this is definitely a very intuitive tool that most people won't use even 90% of what's in here to do what they need to do on their vehicle but if you need to this thing's a very affordable tool that you can use and do all this stuff if you guys need this thing check out the links down in the description and if it's during that prime week that i was talking about at the beginning of the video there should be a code for a discount so go ahead and use that if you need it this week 
Hey guys, thanks for joining me all the way to the end of this video on this launch tool and kind of introducing the features on the Toyota Avalon. As you can see, it's a very useful tool as far as diagnosing and doing all the different things on your Toyota or Lexus vehicles or any vehicles in general that is, if you download the right programming and all that stuff for that vehicle. With all these different diagnostic features and tools and everything, it'll help you fix and diagnose a lot of stuff on your vehicle for a pretty cheap price. I think this thing's usually around a 120 to 150 bucks and it's well worth it as far as the software goes and all the abilities to do everything on your vehicle if you need this thing like i said check out the links down in the description if you guys found this video useful give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to your channel go ahead and subscribe to your channel turn on bell notification and get notified every time i upload a video for all these different projects if i can do it you guys can do it i want to thank you for watching and i'll talk to you guys next time